I do not enjoy dedicated fame farming. I am proof that you do not need to do any dedicated fame farming in order to enjoy Albion Online, have fun, progress your account, as well as take part of decent level or perhaps even high level PvP. If you click this video to find the new super efficient highest fame per hour dedicated fame farming method, put your shadow collar back in your pants. That is not something that I can or will help you with. Instead, I will take you into the mind of a PvP focused player and show to you how I approach fame farming. Of course, you do not have to choose just one or the other. You can play a lot of PvP while also taking time for boring grinding. However, that is just not something that I enjoy and so I want to offer you an alternative. The advantages of this alternative approach is first of all that it's not boring, it's quite exciting and fun all the way through as you farm in the mists. Secondly, you get used to the items that you are going to later be using in PvP, so you learn the cooldowns, the cast ranges, you can experiment with different builds and not just play 100 hours of Nature Staff or Shadow Caller. And finally, it's easy to start. For really good, dedicated fame farms, you need to take some time to set up the fame farming engine, so to speak, because you need to, first of all, spec up your fame farming set in order to start fame, uh, earning fame credits. And secondly, you need to also learn to be efficient at the exact content that you are going to be using for your fame farm. So instead, we are going to do hybrid fame farming in the mists, meaning that we are going there to try to fame farm, but also hoping to take part in PvP as well as earn some silver. Let's go. Put yourself somewhere on this scale between full PvE and full PvP focus. This will depend, of course, on your build, but also on your personal approach to the game, as well as what kind of mood you're in. Are you looking more for fights or some fun, unpredictable things to happen? Or are you looking to fame farm up your equipment or just a steady income of silver? Now, where you end up on the scale should inform some of your decisions in the mists. Most importantly, the decision whether to go for mist camps or not. This is a very typical beginner mistake. If you are looking to just fame farm, then you should not go for mist camps. And instead, you should just kill the roaming or rather standing around mobs all around the mists. If you find mobs which are evolved, those will be very nice for your fame, as well as those um, wisps that you can free, which will give you a little bit of extra fame if you kill the mobs around it. The camps are there primarily for PvP. However, they also do have chests, which always give me a little bit of happiness in my monkey brain. And if you're like me, then go for it, of course. Go clear a couple of camps, but understand that this is sacrificing your fame farming activity for the sake of a little bit of unpredictable fun and potentially some nice rewards from the chest. As opposed to camps, however, the roaming mobs will give you more fame overall they will give you nice stable silver income silver which is raw silver meaning you cannot lose it if you die it is still possible still still possible to get some good items as drops i've even gotten 8.3s a couple times from evolved mobs in the mists on top of that the benefit of killing the roaming mobs is that you're much more likely to come across other objectives the kind of objectives that don't show up for everyone on the map we're talking about coffers that might not be looted we're talking about crystal spiders and we are talking about nightfall abbeys. We will talk about abbeys more in a second, but on top of all these benefits, if you focus on roaming mobs, you can be a lot more relaxed. You don't have to constantly be afraid of someone showing up on your screen. Of course, it's still possible, but it's much more likely that if you see a player, they will be mounted. If you want to get better at survival in the mists, I have a video specifically about that. I'll link it in the description. For now, let's move on to the real golden goose of mists, which is the Nightfall Abbey. If your goal is to farm up your fame while in the mists, then you should absolutely go into abbeys. Only exception is if your build is just simply not strong enough to clear tier 7 or tier 8 abbeys, then unfortunately you will have to skip those. Now, once you're in an abbey, the map will always look like this. I'm sure you know this if you've been in one. In an abbey, there are always these nine rooms, which will have 
two statues and the boss mob. If you're trying to fame farm, then your goal is to essentially go to as many of these nine rooms as possible. Instead of clearing every room you walk to, prioritize moving from one of these rooms to the next, because the big mob in that room will give you a lot of fame, and the fact that there are two statues means double the chance to get a chest. There are two small added benefits which I've experienced from this approach. Number one, that you're more likely to find the little coffers, which spawn in the streets of the abbey and will only show if you're near, and you're more likely to come across another player that is clearing a room somewhere near you, which is a positive because if you see them while they're clearing room, you have a bit of an advantage, maybe they're low HP or maybe they're just busy killing mobs, so you can inspect them and make your decision. The drawback of this, however, is that you will usually end up with fewer Nightfall Abbey buff stacks. This is not critical, but in an otherwise close fight, it might well be the deciding factor. Okay, let's get back to the mists for a moment. First of all, remember, camps are there primarily for PvP. But what about the other objectives? Well, they are also there for PvP to pull players from across the map together into a fight. So if you are completely focused on fame farming, you'd be better off pretty much avoiding them. However, I suggest that you still go out and check, out, check the chests when they spawn because you might find a good fight, you might find maybe a ratting opportunity, maybe you'll be the only one there and you'll be able to just loot the chest and continue whatever you were doing. The turbulent wisps, however, in my experience, if you are looking to fame farm, it's better to just ignore those. In fact, pretty much every single death I had so far on EU is either from a fight which I willingly took and lost, or from being killed by a much higher IP player specifically while I was carrying this turbulent wisp. It is a somewhat common strategy for high IP gankers to hang around the turbulent mist area, hoping that someone will pick it up and then trying to get in their way because they're already dismounted. Let's talk now about what items to actually fame farm. This will, of course, depend on your build. Whatever is the build that you want to play, that's the one where you need fame. But I'll give you some ideas to help with that. I divide my fame farming into three separate stages. The first stage is to get about 75 spec for every core item that I'm going to be using in my loadout. I mentioned this in my item power video, but it is crucial for efficiency that you have some spec in your items before you start taking full loot PvP fights, because you're just gonna waste so much silver to get to the same power level as somebody who has already specced up their items. Somewhere around 75, I think it's 77, which is the halfway point between zero and 100, and that's more or less a good aim to have to get there before you start looking for fights. Of course, I'm guilty of this myself, it's kind of difficult to resist the temptation, and you might still get good PvP fights before that, but I wouldn't make it as a goal, but rather focus on fame farming and take a good fight if it happens, while specking up to about 75 for every core item to complete the first stage. Now comes stage number two, and for this we're looking to do three things. Number one, to get our core items to 100, potentially to 110 if you have the silver for it. Number two, we're looking to get all the non-artifact items in the same tree to roughly 75. And number three, we're looking to get all the artifact items in the same tree to roughly 50. So if I'm using a leather jacket, for example, then this means that my goal is to have 75 at least in assassin jacket, mercenary jacket and hunter jacket, have around 50 spec in all the other leather jackets and around 100 to potentially 110 spec in the main leather jacket that I will be using. If you have a bit of an OCD around this and you want to know exactly where to put your fame most efficiently in other items of the same tree to get the max benefit, then you can Google Albion specialization calculator and you will find tools to help you with that. All of this so far has been centered around fame farming for your main build that you want to use in PvP. However, consider also expanding this stage 2 logic to some other armors, which you might not be using with your main build, but might come in handy when you decide to do some different types of content. For example, I use leather hoods for my main spear build for the mists, 
but I'm also going to spec up my cloth cows, not just to have some more options for my PvP, but also because I know some of them will be very useful if I decide to join some group or guild-based content and want to actually provide decent value to my group. Okay, now comes a really important part because you can fame up your items in different ways. You can use direct combat fame that you get from killing mobs, which is what we've talked about so far pretty much when discussing mists. But you can also use fame credits, you can use tomes, and you can use learning points. First of all, direct combat fame. If you are doing this hybrid fame farm where you're fame farming while doing other things like playing the mists, then this is your number one most efficient way to farm up any fame for an item. Meaning that when you have a look at all the other items in the trees that you are going to be wanting to spec up, like we talked about, for example, leather jackets, then figure out those items that you can actually fame up via combat and try to do it that way. So as you know, I'm using leather hoods for my spear build. I would prefer to use the stalker hood. Obviously, I'm gonna fame farm it by killing mobs. However, I don't mind using mercenary hood and going into the mist, so fame farming that with direct combat fame as well. However, the assassin hood, for example, has pretty much no use to me. I don't want to be running around for hours with an assassin hood with my spear build. And so for that one, I will be using tomes or fame credits. However, for my boots, I'm using Rejuvenating Sprint, which means that I can take any plate boots with me into the mists and fame farm them that way. My suggestion to you in this case is to use your tomes or fame credits to get your boots from zero to about 30 or 40 spec and then wear them and get them up to 75 in the case of non-artifact and 50 in the case of artifact by going into the mists with them. As for learning points, I got a valuable lesson on the West server, which I'm going to now apply to my play in the EU server. I thought originally that I'm just a PvP player, I have no interest in gathering, and so I spent all the learning points I was getting, the initial 500 as well as later from premium, on different weapons that I wanted to spec. After months of playing the mists and other PvP content, however, I one day decided, you know what, I have all, I see all these resources around me, I want to start gathering. It's actually kind of nice and relaxing and it's a pretty decent profit if you get some of those legendary or rare mists. And holy moly, it was so painful to spec up my gathering. I'm very happy that I can do this fresh now on EU. I'm still not a gathering player most of the time, but learning points are so incredibly valuable to spec up your gathering that I strongly suggest that if you have any spec of interest and by spec I mean any little tiny bit of interest to maybe gather in the future to keep your learning points specifically for that and not use them for any combat related destiny board nodes. I hope I've shown you that in the sandbox world of Albion where you are free to do whatever you want you do not have to do dedicated fame farming if you do not want to. Enjoy your life. And if you're sitting there wondering, okay, but what about stage three? That's the end game where you try to get your items to 700.